Good morning, Iris. I'm fine. How are you? Good, thank you. As soon as uh, <coughs> Chen is seated. How are you? This is Jake. Good. Yes. No, what's your Frederica Miller. <coughs> Sitting in for okay. Rick. Okay. I'll, I'll do introductions all around so everybody's aware. Okay. I'm only asking for the, the financial disclosure. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. This meeting of May, to May the 3rd is now called to order. Thank you very much for your patience as we, uh, uh, those of us who are in the construction field, which is every one of us, realize that uh, building infrastructure is good. Sometimes there are delays along the way, and one has to bear with that as we make progress. So that's what we've been doing this morning. Uh, but I want to thank all of you for being here, and, uh, and also as we begin to embark upon this wonderful spring season, uh, there are so many things that we have planned and so many things that we have in order. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do, there are some new individuals around the room, and so just so that all of us are aware of who's where and who is doing what, if we could just start with introductions. I'll start with our friends in Albany, if you can do that first. Hello, <coughs> how are you? Well, how are you? Good. Uh, I'm going to go for the budget this week for Robert Wagner. Oh, good. How are you, Zach? How are you doing? Um, there's, there's some, I don't know, if, nothing we could do about it. There is some, uh, as I was talking about building and infrastructure, uh, there is some rat-tat-tat behind me. I don't know if that's disturbing you there, but I, I don't have any control over that. Uh, so if you want us to speak up louder, we'll do that. Uh, is it okay or what? We can't hear you at all. Okay. They said they can hear? I can. Well, you can. can. They, they can't hear. You oh. can or you can't. the microphone closer? They, no, he has to cannot. Yeah, I'm wearing it. Okay, well, well, we'll try to work through it. And, and then certainly if there are any items that we mention or anything that any one of us is saying and you want us to repeat it, just stop us along the way and we'll uh, speak a little louder, okay? Uh, so why don't we, uh, I'll first go around the room. I'll start at my uh, right, which is your left, and then we'll circle all the way down to the back. I'm Iris Weintraub, I'm the Executive Director of the uh, City University Construction Fund. Frederica Miller, Associate General Counsel, sitting in for uh, Rick Schaefer, the General Counsel. Howard Altschiller, Deputy Executive Director of the CUCF. Paul Lemieux, Executive Director of Design, Construction, and CUNY. Vinnie Green, Director of Vendor Integrity Investigations. Megan Moore, Will Director of Space Planning. Mike Stadulis, Director of Construction for Joint Territory. Nancy Nichols, Special Assistant for Fund. Uh, Judy Burkham, Deputy of the Vice Chancellor. Jeffrey Weinstein, Director of Procurement Services. Jennifer Friedman, Director of Public Private Partnership Projects. Gwen Perlman, Director of Capital Budget. Marcella Maxwell, Trustee. Noel Hankin, Trustee. Wellington Chen, Trustee. Kate Conway, Faculty Observer. Victor and I are from the Fall River Fund. John Antonelli, Director of Financial Compliance. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to uh, use the document in front of me. The only problem is that it seems like it's a little slower uh, this morning, and so I'm going to have to revert to, to paper. To paper. So, uh, the first item that we have on the agenda, first action item has to do with the approval of the minutes for February 23rd. Uh, is there uh, any question about the minutes, any amendments? Any additions, deletions? If not, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. That passes. Uh, the next. The next action item uh, has to do with the. Uh, the resolution concerning the amendment to the CM build contract for the pool renovation project. And that project is at the Carroll Street building. So I'll, I'll read the, um, the resolution first. Uh, resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University Construction Fund authorizes the Executive Director to amend a CM build contract for construction and construction management services as required for the renovation of the pool facility 
at Mega Rivers College, uh, and that's CUNY Project uh, uh, CA uh, 200 ME03. The initial the initial contract costs, and uh, which is which has to do with construction and management, was charged to the state capital fund for an amount not to exceed 2.3 million, per approved uh, CUCF resolution uh, 2024, which is dated February the 10th, 2009. Uh, the amended contract shall not exceed. 3.3 million, and that's an increase uh, totaling 1 million. Be subject to approval as to form by the funds general council. And so, a number of us uh, remember who were on the fund. We remember when this uh, was approved uh, in 2009, and how. And, and matter of fact, uh, let's see. What it was dated February, but um, I remember that we really thought it was extremely important to have it done uh, for that for that summer. We missed. So. Um, so if you could just tell us where we sure. are and why we're... Uh, this is a very important um, uh, facility at, at uh, Medgar Evers. Not only serves the school, but serves the community as well. Um, and there is a, uh, a summer program that's run for local children um, right near Medgar Evers. And because of a number of issues regarding the pool, the pump wasn't working. Um, the whole pool area was just a mess was cracked up and as those of you who know Medgrevers know that the Carroll Street building is the oldest building on the campus. Uh, it was a private school that was acquired uh, by the university. Um, so we, we began the project and you know with all fixer uppers uh, when you start to do construction you run into problems. We ran into an asbestos problem, we ran into an ADA problem on the project. And so, um, it wasn't the best. It's yes, yeah, hell yeah. Um, so it, it not only added time, but it added uh, expense to the project. Um, uh, for those of us who have seen the pool now, it's a uh, totally new facility. Um, the, uh, the college is very much enjoying using it, and they're looking forward to running uh, the summer program this year. So um, uh, although we like to bring our projects in on time and on budget, um, be honest, this was just a project that had many more needs than we first in, uh, anticipated. Yeah, we should um, have pictures of that at some time. If we can't do that, then we have to have the next meeting there, well, so well, you have to decide. Yes, <laughs> the <laughs> 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 That sounds like a good post-article. <laughs> uh, um, any other questions? I mean, this is a pretty good project. Too. So it's taken a few years. Yes. It has it taken. Took, um, it took about a year and a half longer than we wanted it to take. I mean, the other thing that happens is you start doing this work, you find more and more things that needed to get done, the bathrooms, the gutters, the electrical. I mean, it just, the ADA stuff was big time in terms of the locker rooms and access to the pool. So it's just, you know, something that was built 40, 50 years ago in the big world, it just longer. doesn't cut it in terms of the way Egress and ADA significantly added, and we were really determined to try to get this thing open as quickly as we can. And this is, it'll be ready for this summer, it missed last summer. And the, the, the school has hired all the staff they need, they have, they have their lifeguards, they're ready, they're going. So it's there. Historically, it was owned by the Jesuits, or what's the Catholic The Carroll Water. Street? I know it was a private school, yes. I don't know if it was a yeah. church school. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but it's a pretty old building. So you knew I was there left to go walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that the pool was there. The priest was swimming. I don't know. Yeah. 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 It'd be really nice to see some pictures. I need okay. to see the facility also. Sure. Yes. Yeah. That would be great. Um, I know it's not our responsibility, uh, but uh, how does the community get to know that the pool is available for them? There are organizations that the school works with. Um, uh, it's all through organizations, locally based organizations that the college has had relationships with for years. So, as a matter of fact, we had we were sort of scurrying around last summer because uh, those organizations still wanted to run a summer program, and we had reached out to Brooklyn College, but it wasn't you know the, the, the new West Quad building. We have a pool there. But uh, it turned out that it just wasn't going to work out uh, at Brooklyn College. But the, the college has a very good relationship with um, organizations yeah, yeah, in the do. neighborhood. Yeah. Well, the community council. Is yes. One, and I'm exactly. Sure. Right. But I would suggest that maybe we consider, or the college consider, 
having an opening of something with the community. Uh, That'd be a so great idea. Yep. Yeah, what we can do is uh, talk, I, I can talk directly to the president of the college about that. That would be. And also to the head of the community council. So I can forward those remarks. Mm -hmm. so I'll make sure to do that. So any other questions on this particular item? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Opposed uh, abstentions? Thank you very much. It, it passes. Uh, the next item has to do with the resolution fund for the annual uh, <coughs> CUCF CUNY Minority Women Owned Business Enterprise Conference. Um, and so I'll read the resolution, then we'll have explanation and, and discussion regarding this position. Yeah, I think we have to have a motion for it. We're pulling this. You're, you're going to pull it? Yes. Right. Can, can I just explain? Yeah, so why don't we, we yeah, before we, uh, yeah. Um, so um, for the last few years, um, uh, CUCF along with CUNY has rerun an MWBE conference. It's been in August. It's been very successful. Jeff, how many people did you have at the last one? The last one, in, in spite of the worst snowstorm of the year, close to 500. Close to 500 people. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one where I couldn't park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it was well attended. It was very well known. Yeah, I was yeah the, you wanted to Yeah, I was one of the speakers. Um, we've been working very closely with the governor's office in terms of um, uh, finalizing our MWBE numbers. Um, and uh, it, it turns out that the governor's office is going to run their own MWBE conference in October. Um, and they've asked that we uh, hold off on doing our own conference and we join with them uh, in doing a conference. So um, uh, we are in discussions with them. And so for now, we'd like to pull this item because if we go that route, we're not going to need a approval. This happened this morning, otherwise. Yes, actually, it happened. For me, last night, I got a call mm -hmm. from, from DOB, so. Yeah. I think it makes sense. The, the governor is, has really taken a stronger leadership role in, in this area, something that's very important to him. Um, I went to yeah. the MWE conference up in Albany uh, that they held, and so uh, I think with them wanting to consolidate these resources, that, that really does make sense, and it, and it gives us extra visibility at that particular event. We didn't have as much visibility at that particular event, so. But, uh, but I think that this works out pretty well. All right. And probably for the June meeting, we'll probably bring a revised resolution that helps oh. about what's going to happen with the government's office oh. in their conference. Oh. But um, in previous meetings, members of the had asked how we are doing in terms of MWB, and Jeff has uh, our numbers for you. So do, staff do they have a copy up in Albany, or how are we going to do? Uh, we'll have to. Have a couple of okay. okay. Yeah, we'll send it to you right after that. Okay. Jeff, do you have it broken out by uh, various segments, by segment, women, uh, men? Uh, it uh, it, it is on, on, the on this chart. Uh, you see MBE and WB. And this reflects our total expenditure that uh, was reported for the fiscal year that just closed, and it also provides a breakdown between MBE, minority business enterprise um, expenditures, as well as WBE, women-owned business enterprise expenditures, and, of course, total. Uh, this is benchmarked against the governor's goal for this year, which is 20 percent. Uh, so far, we're doing so good. Uh, we've, we've, we've met the goal and exceeded it for this first year, uh, and we're going to continue onward as we enter the second year of this program. Um, but um, this represents our first year under this, um, under the new administration's program. And um, you know, from what we've been told, um, CUCF is in the top tier of performers um, in all of the state authorities. Really? I don't know, I'm not sure if we're number one, but we're, we're in that first top tier. I think tier. friends and we're dancing maybe number one. Well, I was going to ask them about that. <laughs> <laughs> they get a lot of accolades for uh, yeah. the work they've done in that area. But they all generally do pretty well. <laughs>
<laughs> I, um, I'm wondering, is there a report that, that shows, I mean, like the information that you, you know, in terms of our ranking? I, I'd love to see. It will come what, out. And what, what we've been told is that at some point in the very near future, the, the governor's office is going to put out a statewide report card. Mm -hmm. And that they haven't updated all public as of yet. But mm -hmm. uh, it should probably be relatively soon. They keep telling us any day now. So. Well, one of the things I'd, uh, I'd like us to uh, just review that report when it comes in for the minutes. Uh, you know, as the trustee said, I, I just want to make sure that we get the appropriate uh, recognition mm -hmm. uh, for this area. And so I want to have it reported at the Board of Trustees meeting and, uh, and at the board meeting. So, uh, so I want to make sure that we, uh, yes, I'd like to see that report. So we'll the governor's office put that. Yeah. Can I ask Jeff a question? Uh, sure. You, the uh, MBE, as you call it, do you have that broken out by ethnic group, Hispanics, it's, African Americans? There, there is no breakdown below that level. It, it just represents every organization that this New York, the state of New York has certified as being a minority business-owned enterprise. There's no distinction between the various ethnic groups that comprise MBEs. And Jeff, it's all certified by the state, right? Yeah. It, in fact, the state's data system won't accept our entry of data unless it's for an entity that is certified by the state. Who certifies it for the state? Is there an agency? The yes. Yeah. yeah, there is. What? what Empire, Empire State, state Development. It's the Empire State Development. Fund. My daughter's organization. Okay. <laughs> it's good. She may be there. <laughs> She may be part of this. Right. <laughs> I'm going to ask her. She says, I do. One, one thing to keep in mind, we, we do business with vendors who are certified in WBEs by the city or the Port Authority or the MTA, but not necessarily by the SDC. Those people are not included. We're only allowed to include the SDC certified. So they're working on some kind of cross certification, but that hasn't come to fruition. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. This is a great report, and really appreciate you pulling these numbers together. Thank you. It looks, uh, we we should really uh, feel very good about our, our ranking here. I mean, 38.21 overall in the goal of the state is, is 20, so we beat the hurdle. So I want to make sure that we uh, we say that loud and clear. Absolutely. <laughs> the bodies that are doing less, uh, you know, they yell more. <laughs> One more question for Jeff. Uh, your lucky day, Jeff. <laughs> is there, um, I, I see there's some fluctuation in the percentages by quarter. Is there uh, an area that uh, MBWEs are concentrated uh, uh, in other areas where they're light. Uh, do you have any insight into that? It, it, it's more a fluctuation of when uh, expenditures are incurred in a particular construction project. I mean, it's not, unlike goods and services, it's not a steady state of expenditures. Mm -hmm. So it's going to vary very, it's going to be really dictated by the particular project. And when and, we put them out to bid. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and their billings, is, and their billings are probably, you know, this is measures of cash, cash expended, cash out. So they did the work, it's in the bill, there's a, there's a, there's a lag in terms of when uh, it's I, the number. I understand that, but, but my question is more, is there a clustering of, um, of skills no. where the MBWE is concentrated? No. Uh, no, in fact, or, I mean, or is it fairly even across, no, the, board across the board in different aspects it, of the construction project? It's pretty much tracking you know, the distribution of our expenses between construction and design. I mean, Okay. That, that was my question. No. But they're in all the trades that we bid out. Very there's, much so. I mean, yeah. They're, they're okay. not, they don't they're congregate in one. Okay. Could I just ask, are we doing any business with all this? Lend lease? No. Thank you. No, we are not. We are not doing any work with them. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the report. Um, I think we're ready for the next uh, agenda item, which has to do with the resolution of the construction fund authorizing a contract for hospitality services, uh, hospitality consulting services, I should say, and, and so resolve that the Board of Trustees of the Construction Fund 
authorizes the executive director to execute a contract with Ernst & Young LLP for hospitality consulting services to evaluate the property located at 28-02 Skillman Avenue, Long Island City, uh, New York, Block uh, 272, Lot 1, for potential hotel use. Uh, can't wait to talk about this because uh, we talked about this at the last meeting. Uh, for potential hotel use, project number uh, CLCOCF0112. Uh, the contract cost shall be chargeable to university funds for an amount not to exceed 125000 for phase one. And the contract shall be subject to form, uh, to approve as to form by the funds general counsel. I remember we talked about yes, this um, uh, last time. Yes, because we had just yes. put out the RFP. Right. Um, let me just say this is really in the infancy stage, uh, very much so. And I say that for our friends up in Albany at DOB. Zach, don't worry, we're not putting up a hotel. <laughs> at least this year we're not. You're um, not going away with the parking lot, right? <laughs> no. So um, we run a number of hospitality programs uh, throughout CUNY. Uh, there's a program at New York City Tech. There's one at Kingsborough Community College. It's an area that um, has uh, become a very popular and a, a a uh, industry in the city of New York that's growing. If you ride around the boroughs, uh, you'll see these smaller <coughs> hotels going up all over. Uh, yes, um, I might note that many of them are non-union. That's something that we would never do because we've never put up a non-union uh, hotel. So one of the things that we're exploring is that if you're going to expand your hospitality program, um, in talking uh, to folks, it's become very clear you need your own hotel. Uh, you need your own hotel so that your students have a place to train and to work. And in the interim, it is a hotel, and so you've got guests staying there, and you hopefully make money. Uh, when we looked um, uh, throughout the university in terms of where did we have space available, because clearly if you own the land, it'll be a lot cheaper to build the hotel and partner with one of the, what they call one of the uh, flag um, hotel chains, it's Marriott, Hilton, uh, Radisson, uh, right, uh, you know, those type of, of, yes, those type of, of hotels. So because we're not in the hotel business, we don't know how many rooms, how much parking, how much academic space. Um, we went out with an RFP um, to hire a consultant to guide us as to if we were to put out an RFP, A, is it feasible, would it work, and, um, you know, what type of partner would we be looking for? Um, we chose the LaGuardia site because uh, in talking to folks, uh, it became very clear that, um, first of all, Long Island City is very hot. Uh, there are a number of hotels going up there already. Um, it's very close to Manhattan, um, so you have that appeal. Um, and the third most important part, is it's a pretty big parcel we have there. I think as of right, we could build, what, 600,000 square feet yeah. on the site, which we would um, There's so a lot of construction going on in that area. Right like around there. Plans. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, Jennifer and her public-private group, maybe you want to discuss what you did next in terms of finding this consultant. Um, we, we went out with the RFP, as Iris mentioned, to four firms. Um, we did some research. We spoke to um, uh, several people that are experts in, in the hotel industry. And we identified four firms um, that we issued the RFP to. We received responses from, gosh, you know, I believe it was two of them. One, one, two, two, two decided not to respond. Um, and we went through a selection process. Both were very strong, um, really presented very well. And we did decide to go with Ernst & Young. They have a lot of very relevant experience. They work closely with the University of Pennsylvania on a very similar project where it was, um, they, they helped sort of structure a deal to build a hotel on the uh, UPenn campus for the benefit primarily of uh, the UPenn alumni and faculty and families. So it, it was a very comparable project and they were a very strong team. So through this first phase of work, which is what we're seeking approval for today, is for the um, firm to do primarily three things, to, to look at the market and to study 
you know, what, what the appropriate type of hotel would be to put on this site. Um, and to second, to, to do a real in-depth analysis of the site itself. There are, while there's a lot of development rights, there's a lot of zoning issues that touch this site. So we really need a, a good handle on that. And then third, to do a feasibility analysis to help us figure out how do you finance a hotel. They're complicated financings, and we need a good handle on that before we move forward with phase two, which would be an RFP to the development community. And I just want to point out that um, there were representatives from uh, Kingsborough and New York City Tech on the RFP selection committee. That's good. I often wonder, I mean, that area seems to be a mismatch of all kind of stuff going on. Is there a master plan for that particular, I mean, because I always, City? yeah, especially for that area around Stillman, because I wonder what this place and I think it's quite frankly catchers catch can. There's a, yes. there's a myriad of different zoning um, mm -hmm. uh, yes. rights and, and mm -hmm. regulations throughout Long Island yeah, City. Yeah. Very very frenetic. Yeah, very yeah, exactly. frenetic. And there had been some conversation with landmarks about having a historic district committee there, which is kind of not really moving forward at this moment in time, but it's the kind of thing that your rears its head every now and then. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what the city planning, I mean, city planning had developed this, you know, going back 20, 25 years, this whole thing, whole plan for Long Island City, which is only now really starting to, to blossom. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's still the master plan or not. But right. Yeah. The, uh, when will this phase one be finished? What's, what's the anticipated timeline? We hope that work will start within the next month. And, and um, it, it shouldn't take very long. We think by the fall, we should have a, a, a report from the consultant. And out of that report, if it's positive and we think there's a viable project here, we would then start in on the RFP and maybe have an RFP out on the street by the end of the year, the beginning of 2013. I have to say that um, uh, an article appeared about this in Cranes. I have never gotten more phone calls yeah. about a project than I did about this. It was uh, it was enormous the response that we got from developers, hotel chains, local people. It was it was really quite well, something. I well, this this is a great project. Just a couple quick questions, if I can. This hotel idea is primarily to enhance the hospitality. Uh, training? Yes, and uh, and also... The trustee was in our last meeting where we talked about it. Maybe it, 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 it is to enhance the program. I, we sat down with uh, the representative of the Lowe's Hotel chain, and um, you know they have one of the preeminent hospitality programs in the country. And what they said to us was, if you have your own hotel, you get a leg up on everybody. Because what they have to do at the NYU program is they have to work with hotel chains to get their students into these hotels so that they can train and figure out, you know, what's the best area within this, this, this specialty that they would like to work in. Um, and they said if you can build your own hotel then, and the hotel, the goal is for the hotel, of course, to make money. And, you know, CUNY would be a partner in that hotel and it would be our hope uh, to take that profit that we had and pour it back into the programs that would work for the students, so that the yes, 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 it's the preeminent, um, mm -hmm. I guess, program in the, in the country. Um, right. and Can I just take? Um, I was just wondering if we could envision uh, many of the assisted living for the alumni. They want to live near the colleges, and that's another step that we could take with the hotels or living facilities because many of the alumni want to come back to New York. Right. But they want to be near a cultural institution sure. because they're still looking for uh, intellectual stimulation. And so I'd just like for you to keep that in the back of your mind. Sure. That's another money maker. Well, as Jennifer said, there's 600,000 square feet on the site. It's a pretty big site. It's an it entire is. city block. Mm. So there's lots of opportunities on that site. I mean, one of the things that we were talking to LaGuardia about is, um, you know, there's an ability to build classroom space uh, on the site. Um, that would be a big mm -hmm. plus for LaGuardia. LaGuardia is looking for a new gym. I don't know if there would be money available to do that. But there are different things that were sort of weighing on this site because it is a very large site. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting. And there's a, as you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in Long Island City. 
the law school will be opening in what eight weeks? Yeah. The new law school will be opening very soon. We'll we'll finish with, yes, yes. We're pretty mm -hmm. much finished with construction. It's a great project. Uh, so yes, do you have some? So is there a motion to uh, to approve this item? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? Thank you very much. It, it passes. Uh, just uh, just two things I want to report on. For those in, like, um, are trustees using SharePoint right now or in order to get your access to? You're looking at me as if I'm green. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're not. There, there is a training program right now that is available to individuals, to the trustees, um, and we have some information on that. I think uh, we can get it from one of the staff here. You know, if you want to just learn how to access mm -hmm. and navigate through SharePoint. So. Yeah, I have no problem. Okay. Call Nancy. Okay. <laughs> you will call Nancy. Nancy, you're aware of the resources being offered to us, right? I know there is the uh, email format that was sent around by the Business Council Committee yeah. that you yeah. Yeah, there is something, that, and, and I, I have it, but um, but if you're interested, then let me know, and then I'll give you the information. Um, uh, the other thing I just wanted to be sure of is that the trustees have completed their uh, financial disclosure forms, because that's really important. If uh, you can just be sure, I believe the deadline, uh, Council, is May the 15th, 15th uh, right? So, uh, so you just have a few more days. I mean, it's really important that we do that. Uh, so everybody can just make sure that they adhere to that. That would be great. Um, the third item, the, the next meeting, um, we'll work out sometime in June. And so we'll have the staff who will get to you on that. Um, and then uh, what I'd like to do now is that's all I have to report on. I'd like to uh, talk about what's next at CUNY right. and have the uh, executive director give us a report. Normally I give an update, um, but uh, I thought that I would use the presentation that I gave a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, CUNY last month we sponsored um, and hosted um, a conference from uh, a national organization called the Society for College and University Planners. Um, uh, it's called SCUP and uh, CUNY has been uh, very active with SCUP over the last few years. When I first got here five years ago, they asked us to host the uh, um, North Atlantic Regional Meeting. And I think I very wisely said no. I said that, you know, uh, we were working on a lot of things and it wasn't a good time uh, to host a conference. We chose to do it this year because um, we're opening so many buildings in the fall and we wanted to put our best foot forward and, and, and give the best show possible. And uh, because we uh, had the conference during spring break, we were able to use the new John Jay building. And um, not that we're competitive here, at CUNY, but um, the uh, Pacific Conference was in uh, at Stanford at Palo Alto, and we were trying to exceed the number of people that they had. I don't know, Megan, did we exceed? We came really close. We came really close. Um, you ought to check the numbers. I'm sure that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was trying to bring strangers in off the street. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, anyway, it was a great uh, few days, and um, uh, um, uh, the mayor's office was very gracious. Uh, there was a reception that was hosted there. And on the last day of the conference, uh, we gave numerous tours of both buildings under construction and buildings that we had opened. Uh, in the last year, so it was really great. I also want to say that uh, the Chancellor spoke um, uh, the first day of the conference, uh, President Gail Mello from LaGuardia, who's a, a national expert on, on community colleges spoke, uh, as well as we had Seth Pinsky from the uh, New York e Economic Development Corporation, uh, because they <coughs> had a big push in terms of uh, both attracting uh, uh, higher education uh, organizations here, as well as trying to help those of us who are here get through the development phase of whatever projects. Um, so, um, you know, we, um, uh, we had a really great, great conference. And I think um, our partners at NYU and Columbia on the last day at the luncheon um, also gave a perspective of what's next with them. But um, I thought I would take you through the presentation uh, that I gave. So, I, you know, I began with an overview. I think everybody knows about CUNY. I, I can pass through this, you know, in terms of when we were created and, and how far we've come. Um, I then, uh, you know, went through where our various uh, 24 campuses are. Um, 
I think we're all familiar with that. Um, do, do we, it's 25. 24. 24. 24. It was 23. Okay. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so the theme of the conference was education in a changing world and what's next. Um, and so what I did was I started um, in 2001 to show where we've come in the last uh, 10 years. Um, and so uh, in 2001, um, we had uh, 197,000 students who were in degree-seeking programs, and another um, 205 uh, students who were taking continuing ed or certificate programs. Uh, and we had nearly 30,000 faculty and staff working at CUNY. We are a very, very big in employer. Um, and I think, as, as everybody knows, uh, you know, CUNY has gone through a truly transformational decade. Um, and, uh, you know, it all began when the chancellor came in, in 2000 and, and basically declared that, you know, CUNY was going to change both the way that we did business um, and was going to really embrace the decade of the science, uh, which we are still experiencing uh, now. And, um, <coughs> you know, uh, we've had the creation of the Honors College since then. Um, and uh, in 2006, I think, you know, one of the major publications was The Economist, which, um, you know, ran a, a, uh, a complete edition on, on CUNY, and it called it the rebuilding of the American dream machine which is truly going uh, on here um, <coughs> at, at CUNY. Um, so here we are in 2012, and, um, you know, we've come, as I say, we've come a long way. Um, we now are 24 institutions with the creation of the new community college. Uh, there's now a graduate school of journalism. Uh, the School of Professional Studies is um, <coughs> in the thick of things in terms of providing online baccalaureate degrees. And um, <coughs> we have created the CUNY School of Public Health, which is now co-located um, in East Harlem uh, with the, um, the School of, uh, of uh, Social Work. Um, <coughs> and today, CUNY's enrollment is at an all-time high. Um, we have 270,000 degree-seeking students and another 223,000 who are seeking continuing ed and are, are in certificate programs. And we have nearly 39,000 um, faculty and staff. So back in 2001, it was 30,000. Now it's 39,000. And I have to say, uh, the bulk of the increase has been in faculty. Um, and that's been a priority of the chancellor in terms <coughs> of increasing the faculty. And um, another interesting fact is that CUNY confers 35,000 degrees each year. So now we have. Since 1967, 1.1 million degrees have been uh, offered um, by, by CUNY. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, uh, Phil goes to graduations. I'm sure Wellington goes as well because uh, CUNY board members go. I know that uh, vice chancellors are asked to co co cover a couple because the chancellor can't be at all of them. I have to say it's the highlight of, uh, of, yeah. of my year when I get to go. and. <laughs> You see the families and what they've really sacrificed to have these young folks. Uh, um, <coughs> and so, increase in faculty and staff, um, clearly facilities um, really becomes an important element in what we're able to provide. Um, we're now up to 27 million gross square feet of space with 303 buildings. Um, over 60% of our buildings were built before 1975. So um, this means not only do we need to provide new buildings, but we can't lose sight of the fact that we have to modernize and really keep up with the older building stock uh, that, that we can. Another interesting, interesting statistic from 2008 to 2012, we will have added 1.5 million square feet of space uh, to the CUNY portfolio. Um, and uh, our next capital, our, our current capital budget um, is $3 billion of funding over the next five years. Um, and uh, the city budget's coming out today, um, and we're hopeful that, like Gwen, that there'll be some good news in there for us. 
little bit of good news. Um, as well as, you know, we are pursuing, as you heard Jennifer talk about, whatever public-private partnerships uh, we can. So um, uh, our three um, uh, recently completed buildings, uh, the first one is the John Jay Building, um, 625,000 square feet. It's a multi-use facility. It was designed by Skidmore Owens and Merrill. And um, I have to say that, you know, we're across the street from John Jay, and if I'm having a bad day, really what perks you up is you walk into that building. A, you see the students, you know, using the facility, but more importantly, we created the type of social space and learning space that you get to be alone. Um, it has finally given John Jay the campus that they just never had. And the green roof, um, Right, Bob? We got the uh, certificate of opportunity. Not yet? We're, we're getting close. We're getting, getting close. Getting close. And as soon as we do, we're going to open up that roof and we'll see our students out there and, and really enjoying themselves. Um, the second building uh, that opened uh, recently in 2010 was the Medgar Evers Academic Building. Uh, this was a Polchak Partners uh, building. Um, you know, th the building has state-of-the-art classrooms. The nursing program for Medgar Evers is run out of there. We have simulation labs. Um, we also have 27 um, uh, research labs in that building as well, mm -hmm. which will, you know, really serve as an impetus for the faculty there to really seek out more grant money because the research uh, labs are there. Um, and, uh, you know, again, uh, it's, it's a spectacular building, and I think it really adds to the neighborhood. The, the one uh, uh, facet of this building that I think is really terrific is the building opens itself up to the community with the stairways and the open glass. The community can see what's going on, and we believe that's really a very positive thing. And so the last building that opened up um, uh, this past year was the Silverman School of Social Work and CUNY School of Public Health. Um, uh, we, we took the Faculty Senate on a tour of it uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I know that they were extremely impressed. It's our most successful public-private partnership that we've had to date. Um, and uh, for those who go on East 79th Street, um, uh, the Brodsky organization has already brought down the old building, uh, and they are starting their construction of, of their new site. And uh, it was just a great relationship that we have with the Brodsky organization. They really provided us with really uh, a spectacular building that, that's 147,000 square feet. Um, in East Harlem, and it, it really serves as a beacon uh, for Excuse the community. Me, did we build the dormitories? We have students there? We built, we, we gave over to the Graduate Center uh, a parcel of land that we had to buy that we couldn't use for the facility, and they had raised $15 million right. for their dorm, and then they went out and got financing for the remainder. Uh, I'm told that there's a waiting list for next year. Yeah. It's 100 yeah. beds, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been one That's of our more a huge success. So. Beautiful building on 118th Street, which is very nice. It's so, um, as I mentioned before, the Chancellor has determined that this is the decade of the sciences, um, and uh, you know the university is now committed to creating um, you know a healthy pipeline in terms of facilities for science and math, technology and in engineering, as well as in advanced science research. So we have a number of projects um, that, that uh, really uh, take the chancellor's vision and put it into the bricks and mortar that, that you see. Um, so going up at City College is the ASRC complex. Um, uh, it's the 400,000 square foot advanced science research facility for the university as well as a separate building for CCNY. Um, the, uh, the new facility was designed by Cohen Peterson Fox. They have the architects who not only did the law school, which is opening in a few, uh, a few weeks, but they also designed the vertical campus for us at, um, uh, at Baruch. Um, and I believe, Bob, you have uh, the curtain wall is, is still going up. Yes, we finished the summer, but it's still going up, and it's a big curtain wall, no glass. Uh, wow. And they are, there's two cranes up there putting it up. Very much on, you know, it's on schedule. Huge cranes. Not, huge cranes huge is cranes. right. And Big cranes, not that kind of crane. <laughs> but um, it's moving forward. It will, it's not been without its glitches, as many of these projects are, but they're <laughs> very <laughs> diligent in pushing scans for the CM. And it's a, it's a partnership in terms of design between FLAT and KTFK. 
APF was did the, the public space, the design of the building, as you can see the building, and Platt, which is more of a science planning group, did all the interior fit out of the laboratory. So that, that partnership seems to be working pretty well. The ASRC complex um, is uh, under the guidance of uh, Jillian Small, who's our Vice Chancellor for Research. And she is out there um, you know, pounding the pavements to try and get those type of advanced uh, researchers who can come to CUNY and really uh, put us, or continue to put us on the map in terms of advanced science uh, research. It's like, it's like trading <coughs> baseball players. I mean, in terms of the science at the level that we're looking to improve, it really is <coughs> in terms of looking for the best to do the science. Mm -hmm. There aren't a lot of them out there, and they can move around because they move with their grants. Mm -hmm. the grants go with the, with the researchers, they're not assigned to the universities. One of the elements that we've put into the ASRC building, which you'll see on the next screen, is that we have, um, uh, as, as in all new advanced science buildings that have gone up, uh, is open labs, because that lends to more flexibility and more, uh, more sharing of information. Um, so it's no longer that a faculty member will have a lab that will be cordoned off and locked and no one will know what's going on. Um, at Rockefeller University, which uh, just opened or renovated their new uh, research building. It's a similar open plan in terms of open labs, and this really lends itself to more, uh, more, more working together. Uh, the next building that we are hoping uh, that will open this fall is the new science building at Lehman College. Um, this is a, uh, a 60,000 square foot building. Um, and Lehman, as you know, has a very strong relationship with the New York Botanical Gardens. They have um, our largest botany program in the university. Um, the uh, architects Perkins and Will designed, this is phase one of what we are hoping will be a two-phase um, science program. Uh, in order for us to do the second phase, we have to move buildings out of the way, uh, both the nursing school and the child, um, child care center. So. Um, uh, we are working on moving those sites so that we can start to think about creating uh, the second phase. Um, and the other program that, that uh, in terms of the decade of science, as we've reported here before, we're wholesale doing large project of renovating labs and creating the type of space that um, our faculty need. Uh, to date, we've um, improved over 35 instructional and research labs throughout the university. Um, and I think that if you went on any campus and asked the faculty or the administration, uh, they're very pleased uh, with, this, with this program. Um, and another initiative that we've been working on um, is to, to make our classrooms also um, more flexible uh, in terms of the furniture we put in those classrooms, um, the type of, uh, of learning apparatus that we put, put in so there can be long dist uh, far distance learning as well as students who are there as well. Um, and we're just trying to be more flexible in terms of creating uh, those classrooms. Um, another feature is that um, uh, we have in many of our buildings now, um, both new buildings and renovated space, larger lecture halls. With the increase in um, enrollment, it's very important that we have the space uh, that can accommodate students of like 90 or more um, so that we can have these larger lectures take place and we don't have to have uh, these, uh, these smaller classes. And um, the libraries on a number of our campuses are very outdated. Uh, you know, libraries are used for different things today. Uh, it's unusual that you will find students going into stacks to take out books. Um, and uh, one of the projects that uh, we are um, uh, very proud of, and we were up there yesterday with, with Robert Stern, who's the architect, is the new library up at the Bronx Community College. And uh, it truly is a spectacular building, and it's scheduled to open um, June. by June. The, the new library will be opened. Um, and when you go in there, you'll see, you know, there aren't these huge stacks. There are some stacks, but not like we're used to seeing. Students tend to go to libraries now because they need to plug in their computer, they need some quiet space to study. It's not so much because they're going there to take out a book and do research. They can do all the research they need from their computers. They don't need to go in and take out an old science book. Excuse me, aren't you also doing something at Major Williams in the library? We are doing something, yes. We're redoing. Digging a hole. Yep. 
I'll let Bob go into that afterwards. Oh, okay. um, so um, the, this will just, you can go back, Megan. This will just give you a sense of, of the uh, new library at the, at the uh, at uh, Bronx Community College. As I said, we were up there with Robert Stern, who was the architect. And um, as everybody knows, the first phase of the campus was designed by McKim White. And um, when you go there and you see the new building, uh, you would think that McKim White had put this building in its place. We were able to match the exterior tile. Um, it's a very, um, uh, it's not one of these modern glass buildings because that really would have stood out, I think, in that end right. of, the, of, the, of the campus. Um, but it looks like it's always been there. Yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. And this just goes to show you about, you know, when you bid a project, when you don't bid a project. We bid this project at the very low point of the recession. The prices we got were just phenomenal because companies wanted to work, so they were prepared to, to bid low. So. There are elements you'll see in this building that I believe if we went out to bid today, we wouldn't be able to, to afford it. Um, so uh, uh, I talked about the 2.3 million square feet that's going on now. Um, we're creating 175 new classrooms, which translates into over 6,700 new seats for our students. Um, and the most important thing is that all of these buildings not only provide space for our students, but they provide the type of space that students need today um, in universities. Um, and uh, the buildings that were created really work with the communities to say, we're here, we're part of the community, and there's space for you in these buildings if, if you need it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's really quite a, a revolution we're going through here at CUNY. Um, so, uh, the, the, I guess the biggest change in the way we've done our business is these public-private partnerships. Um, and I mentioned uh, the School of Social Work. Um, the law school was, was originally set out to be a public-private partnership. We broke ground uh, last month on our new dorm at the College of Staten Island, which is also a public-private partnership. And the goal of our public-private partnerships, there's three goals, to monetize our assets, because we have undervalued assets to us, but have a lot of value to private developers. Um, we create revenue to help to support the project, so we don't have to just get a total state or city appropriation. Um, and uh, through the efficiencies um, that are available from private entities, we, we, we reap the benefits, because they, they're, they're not encumbered by the rules and regulations that we are, so it, it allows us to really bring projects in at an affordable rate. Um, so uh, that was my presentation, and I, I just uh, reminded the group that uh, you know all colleges and universities are facing challenges, but you know we believe at CUNY that you know we we've identified what those challenges are, and it's really going to take us forward into the next decade. It's wonderful. It's great. Um, I, thank you. It's just excellent. Thank you very much, and, and really just applaud the work that. Uh, the team is doing, you know, and this, this doesn't happen through one person and it doesn't happen with individuals working separately without a focus on a vision and you know, certainly, you know. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I've said this uh, a thousand times. I'll say a thousand times more. I've got a wonderful staff. Yeah. You know, I always say that I get up there and make the speeches, but they're the ones who, who make me look good. And I just want to say one other thing, that this conference was a success really because uh, Megan really took charge of it and, uh, and really uh, did not let go. Um, every, th every step of the way I told her, this is a huge mistake, we shouldn't be doing this, but thank God she didn't listen to me and uh, uh, it really allowed CUNY to really step with our best foot forward. Uh, Megan, you have our gratitude. Thank you so much, you and the rest of the team. Um, let me just ask uh, uh, one question. Um, you know, naturally at the conference, as you are there, you said that uh, Columbia and also where you were there also, and so one could not help look at, uh, maybe there's some insights or factoids that you have that uh, help to, uh, that we could understand, that help us to understand how CUNY is head and shoulders over some of our, our other institutions. You know, any any observations that you have that, that you might want to share with us? You know, we 
if you look at Columbia, you look at NYU, you look at CUNY, you know, we are very different institutions. Um, uh, I think, though, that, you know, we all have uh, the challenge within what we're about, what we stand for, and where we're located to be able to really grow and expand and to really take in those additional students who very much want to come to New York. Um, <coughs> Columbia is going through their, their new uh, campus, um, which they bought all this land. And I happen to know that before they even put a shovel in the ground, it was 10 years of planning and working with the community to make sure that they weren't stomping on what the community was about. You pick up the papers today, you see all that NYU is going through in terms of trying to expand in the village, as well as what they're doing at Brooklyn Polytech. Um, so, you know, they have that set of challenges. And CUNY has a set of challenges. You know, on many of our campuses, we have no more land to build. Uh, we have to think about um, where in the community we're going to move ourselves. Um, and, you know, we're sort of fortunate in that, um, you know, we have the assistance of the state and the city when it comes to building our facilities, um, and that gives us a bit of a leg up. But I think all of us are sort of grappling with, you know, how are we going to interface with the city of New York, and, and how are we going to be part of really the growth that's going on here in the city? Mm, that's good. No, thank you. Thank you very much for those insights. And um, you know, we'll continue to follow this with great interest. This is a, a great story, um, quite frankly. And I got to thank Jay Hershenson. I think he coined it real well. You know, all the ads. You know, five in the fall. You know, uh, five new buildings yes, that we're going right, to open right. in the fall. It's going to be a bit, very busy time for us. Yeah, five in the fall. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, do we, uh, Mike? Uh, do you have uh, some items that you want to just brief us on and report? I, I thought I'd just talk a little bit more about the science research facility. Thank you. And what I did was I brought some, first I had that computer generated image that was in the presentation, and then some actual photographs of the current wall run. You might want to look at those. Um, at this point, we're about 30% complete with that project. So you have all the utilities um, coming from the street. You have power, you have gas, you have high temp hot water and chilled water coming from the central plant at City College, which is about five blocks away from the site. And that's what we're getting to All the foundation is done, all the steel is done, all the concrete, all the jet is done. We have the curtain wall going up and we have mechanical systems going up. So all the mechanicals that go up through the building have been completed. And the size and the base of the electrical on these floors themselves. So that's what we're going um, at this point, uh, we're looking at a full 2014 completion on that project. Wait, I'm sorry, we're trying to okay. just make sure we have enough copies. Of oh, no, there are all, all just two copies in there. So two just copies. Just take a look at them. Five different, different shots. Oh, it's five different shots. Oh, oh thanks. Just to get an idea of what it looks like. We'll send, we'll distribute it electronically to everybody, it's just to get an idea of what it looks like, you know, at, for, at this point. Now, when you're looking at those pictures, remember that there are fundamentally three buildings. Two buildings, ASRC is on the uh, Fort Nichols Terrace side, and CCNY is on the interior side, and, and joining them at the base level is shared space, which is effectively a building. So there are it's like three buildings, two going up and one just connecting them down to low level. So. Yeah, you can really see that in the rendering. It's like a podium that the two structures sit on, oh. and that's the shared space. A lot of imaging equipment goes in there, or the Varen goes in there. The utilities, especially the electrical switch gear, uh, takes up a lot of that space. Uh, mechanical systems, where they come in and pumps and that kind of thing are in that space. But there's a lot of um, High level imaging that's going to be going on at that at that level. Uh, a lot of shielding has to go into this project and um, to allow that to happen. You, even though these buildings are really four and five stories, that's what you mean. They very high. And, and the reason that it's so high is that the floor ceiling is very high, it's like 15 plus feet. 
but there's about 30, 40 square feet of, feet of space of air handling equipment and everything else that sits on the roof. Because mm -hmm. they're both laboratory buildings, so all the air comes in once, straight pass through and straight out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of mechanical building stuff on the roof of those buildings, which just makes a very, very tall building. Mm -hmm. It's very majestic. It's very majestic. You look up on 35th Street, you look up and you see Absolutely this right. It is the highest thing that you're going to see. It's gorgeous. You're looking up. Yeah. And you're looking uphill anyway, but you're looking uphill at yes. something on the top of the hill that's going even higher. That's right. <laughs> that's great. So, uh, and even though this is all laboratory and there's human hoods in almost every state, we still have a lead silver on the top, which is a difficult thing to achieve yeah. with that type of thing. The next highest point will be the Bronx Community College. <laughs> you see, if, if you're going south on the Deegan, you see the new uh, Bronx Community College building. It stands out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Maybe not now in the spring with all the leaves, but in the winter. That's the highest point in the Yes. Yes, it is. Well, the highest point is further inward on the campus, but if you're driving south on the Deegan, you used to have a beautiful view of the Coco Library dome, which is analogous to the Columbia. Uh, the Dome of Columbia, built by the same people. And fundamentally, what you now, what you're really now looking at, is the new building that we just put up on the north, on the very north end of the Bronx Community College campus. We effectively completed the quad, which had been designed around 1898 when they were first building the campus, mm -hmm. and never completed that end of the quad. Right. That's great. Yeah, thanks. Unless there's any questions about that process. No, that's good. Thank you very much, Mike. Really appreciate it. Um, thank you uh, for um, one of the things that we like to do, and you're certainly achieving it, is uh, in addition to passing resolutions, just to have show and tell so we can learn more about uh, what's going on. So thank you very much for that information. So um, any other items that the trustees would like? Or, or is there something else? I mean, we, you know, we've had great responsiveness. There are two things that we asked for. I just want to note for the record that uh, they have been supplied. That is to understand the progress of where we are with uh, MB and WE and, and also continued progress and just showing us what's going on. So, you know, that's been done. Uh, so I just want to thank uh, the staff here for, for delivering on that in a very timely manner. I uh, appreciate it. A lot of hard work goes into that. We don't we're not unaware of, of that. Uh, and if there are any other items that the trustees would, would like, um, we'll continue to just keep us informed of, of different things. Um, Thank you. So if there are no other items, I'd like to call for a motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> Stay here forever. Huh? Uh, no, that's the wrong that's the wrong motion, <laughs> trustee. I'm moving to adjourn. <laughs> Um, all in favor of it, without you. Uh, thank you very much, really. And, and enjoy the rest of the month, uh, really, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.